How you doing my friends? Your Florida history hunter, Deland Diggs. And today we are back checking out the community of Deerfoot. Now what we are on right now is how the road looked very close to this, just like this here over 125 years ago. So this was an original Deland dirt path road. And it's called Deerfoot. And behind me, um, there's a sugar sand part of the road that leads through a little pine forest and eventually turns into a paved road but we are at the extreme western part of the road on heading towards the eastern shore of Lake Barrisburg and this area has got history um, first off Lake Barrisburg itself which was named for gentleman, the English gentleman, Barrisford, who established a plantation just uh, to the south of us. And we may actually be in part of the plantation right now, but I, I believe that uh, the bulk of the plantation's not even a quarter mile from here, heading south. But right now we're heading west. And uh, this is the original wagon road. And of course, there was a time when uh, this is orange groves. That yeah, would have been a, a, the latter part of the 1800s, probably into the 1960s, possibly maybe in the 1970s. They were still. Uh, here we go. Here's some. Here's an old. Uh, cast iron water pipe right there. still on the uh, still on the ground don't know if it's still carrying water <laughs> imagine I could get my DeWalt and drill a hole in it but if it's still energized it would turn into quite a mess really fast <coughs> Excuse me, I just sucked in a moth. <coughs> ah. So we're uh, just in our second week of August here, Central Florida. Had a little bit of a cold front, meaning that the temperatures haven't been in the high 90s. And, uh, we're actually in the high 80s, low 90s right now. It's a good opportunity to get out, get some sun, do some exploring. So we're getting real close to a, uh, a pond or swamp area right now. It's, if you see it's off to both sides, this is really stagnatic, stagnant. There's no uh, flow to it. This is just uh, accumulation from rain. And this side over here, it's like some kind of hair on our egret. Uh, this side here is actually a little retention pond area that uh, was built in the late 1800s, very early 1900s. Uh, they uh, bottled water back here, Beresford Water Company, taking advantage of the trend of the day. And uh, we've got the lake out there, that light area. And here's a uh, the drainage canal, but the uh, 
pipe that runs up underneath here. Show you this side of the thing. It's all filled in with sediment down there. And that runs back that way. I'll get down a little lower here. It runs out into there into that retention pond. That's the return for the excess water that they had for the bottling facility. So I do so we're gonna come around here on the lake a little bit. We can get a better feel for how this operation worked. So there was a spot out in here somewhere. You can uh, see they got these holding tanks and all here, but off to that side there's trickling water. And so out in there someplace, we might be able to see some evidence of it here. But out in there someplace, you can actually see movement in the water. So there's a uh, artesian well. It's probably filled in with debris somewhere out there, and they would channel this water off into into troughs. Here we go. Here's one right here. Holding tanks, and then. Uh, out the back there it would go back and recycle the water back into the lake like Beresford so I like to walk back in here sometimes to the uh, the animals turn turn artifacts over try not to do any digging back here but we can look for look at that there's a nice piece of melted glass possibly like a coke bottle or something some more melted glass and one would expect to find a lot of melted glass because it was a huge fire here entire place went to the ground all the barns and buildings and, and the house there was a beautiful home out here too uh, just a little bit north of where we're stopped at right now so I'm gonna grab these for the collection um, so we can trace the history back to, to the bottling facility and, uh, strangely enough, um, I did read where uh, they didn't have their own bottles, so I don't think, I think possibly they might have had bottles with paper labels on it. Uh, looks like some window glass. Been through a fire though, but you can tell it's all melt it just some bottle fragments and it'd be funny if this was actually a part of a printed bottle you know and it's just for those kind of questions that I have that I always tend to uh, take little fragments home so that I can get them up underneath a magnifier nice little artifact right there too I like to collect these things this is a uh, tube from knob and tube electric uh, this allows you to pass a wire to a, to a two by four I saved these for an art project you know been working on
looks like a piece of Duraglass. 50s, 60s, or 70s possibly. Another fragment of melted glass. Actually looks like the top of a soda bottle, like the lip of a Coke bottle. Another fragment of that Dura glass. Another chunk of some melted glass. Come a ripple piece of glass here. I'm gonna take that because it looks like it might have some magnesium in it. And if it does, then I can I can date that glass. Yeah, look, look. Same one I found? Yes, yeah, same one I found. That does like that sometimes. You should find in the same same piece of glass. Make a nice little Nice little pile. What was that? Uh, a piece of glass. Yeah. Pieces of melted glass. Some kind of piece of metal right there. It's really big. It goes out that way. I feel the ground vibrating. I know it's pretty deep, whatever it is.
All right, so bear with me a moment, folks. We are going to uh, put some sleeves on right now. Don't want to rub up against any poison ivy. Okay, catch my bearings here. So I'm trying to get out this way a little bit. Okay, so we've arrived at our destination. There's a beautiful, gigantic live oak. Look at that baby. There's one there. There's another one out there, and this is marking the footprint of the original homestead. So at this point we're expecting to start seeing artifacts laying on the ground from that era. And here we are. Uh, I just started hitting a debris field right here. Let's get down low. We got some some brick. And there's a piece of uh, piece of pottery. Another piece of pottery right there. fragment right there. Now this is mostly surface. I'm sure there's stuff buried but we're not doing a dig. We're just sort of breaking the surface. That's a brick. of brick fragments along this spot. Good heaping pile of brick here.
There's another big pile of debris under this live oak right here. Piece of clay pipe. A nice mound of red brick. Piled up a couple feet. Look at that beauty. I don't know if you can see them or not right there. It's like a tropical orb weaver. And there he goes. There she goes. So I'm looking for fragment trails. A hundred and some years of the animals turning the earth over. They usually kick up a little bit of a debris field. There's still a lot of organic stuff, debris laying on the ground covering stuff up too. I was hoping that uh, maybe the uh, wild hogs would have rooted the spot. Apparently they haven't been back in here in a while. Could be because uh, they're being hunted off. Like we're gonna be finding much today. There's a looks like an old that was an orange tree. We were in the middle of an old grove. There's a bottle right there. I don't think it's that old. No, that's a, a modern. 
probably came in off a storm or people have been living back here over the years too. They've been junk in and they don't carry it out. There's a I thought it was a piece of brick, but it's not. It's that Yingling Old Company new bottle. And air potato katsu, highly invasive. Okay, my friends. I'm going to look for some more brick debris here. This is uh, close to where uh, they actually have one of the uh, bottling buildings. I believe it's right here. Of course, that's been long since uh, destroyed. But we can still see some evidence by the, uh, where the fireplace was. Right here, there's the uh, base for the fireplace. Right here, you see some of the some of the red bricks. And up in the there is where I used to find a lot of uh, smelted glass from the fire. It used to be huge piles of it out here over the years it's been uh, covered over all right my friends I want to thank you for joining us again this is your Florida history hunter um, on the road to discovery and we are at uh, Deerfoot long forgotten uh, the land water bottling facility on Lake Barris for early 1900s well, thanks for watching if you like our content click that like button down below and uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already tell your friends about it thanks for watching have a great day